Okay, so this is the final lesson from chapter three. This is on the inverse and the contrapositive of conditional statements. Okay, so we're still working with conditional statements from chapter or from unit 3.5, but now we're going to deal with things that are the inverse and the contrapositive of that conditional statement. Okay, so an inverse of a statement that is a form by negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion of a conditional statement. Uh, for example, for the statement, if a number is not even, then it is not divisible by 2. So what you're doing is, is you're taking a conditional statement and you're making both the if and the then part of the statement negative. Basically, all you do is you just put a not in front of it. So the original uh, conditional statement here would have been if a number is even, then it is divisible by 2. All right, so there would be your original. So the inverse is just taking that and making both of them negative. And just putting not or non or no in front of it makes it that the easiest way to do that. And the other one is the contrapositive. All right, a statement that is formed by negating both the hypothesis and the conclusion of the converse of a conditional statement. Okay, so remember the converse is when you flip them around. The contrapositive now is when you do the inverse of that. So for example, if a number is even, then it is divisible by 2. Um, so then the contrapositive of that is to switch the if and the then around and also make them both negative. So if a number is not divisible by 2, then it is not even. So you're switching them both and you're baking both of them negative. That's contrapositive. Okay, so that is the converse of the, basically the converse of the inverse, okay? So that's what you're doing there. And so for not notation, uh, we use this because this little hook there in front of the, the hypothesis and the conclusion. And what that does is it shows that it's the negative of it, okay? So the inverse, you make them both negative. And then on the contrapositive, you're basically flipping them around and making that the converse. So determine the conditional statement if February 29th, if today is February 29th, then it is a leap year. So let's come up with a conditional statement for that. So try that on your own. I'll pause it and then I'll put down the answer. All right, so this one was a bit of a trick question because this is the conditional statement. Here's your hypothesis. So you have to assume that it's February, and then you're going to make a conclusion. So if it's February 29th, then it's a leap year. And that's true because there's only uh, 28 days in a regular year in February. So now the inverse of that, remember now, is to make both of those negative. So it would look like this. If it's not February 29th today, then it's not a leap year. Right? So that would be the inverse to this statement. And do we know this? Is this true? Is it possible to have a day during the year that's not February 29th and for it not to be a leap year? Yes, so that is true. It is possible. So this is a false statement. Like it could still be April 1st and still be a leap year like it is this year. Just because it doesn't happen to be the day, day exactly the 29th, it still makes that entire year a leap year. Okay, now let's determine the contrapositive of that. So this is where you're going to switch both of them around. And that's going to say... Alright, 
That statement. So if this, so if this year is not a leap year, then today is not February 29th, which is true. It can only be February 29th if it is a leap year. So this is true. Okay. So now we're going to look at this one. If a number is a multiple of 10, then it is a multiple of 5. Right. Cool. All right. So. So we want to determine the conditional statement. So that is the conditional statement. We know that. So if multiple 10, then multiple of 5. There, just shorthanded it there. Now we want to write the contrapositive of that. So that is. Basically, we're going to skip a step and go straight to the inverse, or the, we're going to switch around the inverse. So it's going to look like this now. So the contrapositive. So we're going to switch both of these around and make both of them negative. If a number is not a multiple of five, then it is not a multiple of ten. And is that true? Yes, it is. Can you think of a number that you can divide? Uh, you can't divide five, 5 and 10 into? No, they don't exist. All right, so this is true. So if it's not divisible by 5, then you can't divide it by 10. It is possible to have numbers divisible by 10 that aren't divisible, or sorry, that are divisible by 5 that aren't divisible by 10, like 25, 35, 45, but this is saying not divisible by 5. Okay? So that's what you're doing for these ones. So determine the conditional statement. For the, the third example here is dealing with colors. All right. So here, this is the conditional statement. So if a color is red, yellow, or blue, then it's a primary color. So now we got to figure out the converse of that. So if a color. is a primary color, then it is yellow, blue, or red. And that's true, okay? So then the inverse of this one would say, negative of the original um, conditional statement. So if a color is not yellow or red, then it is not a primary color. And that's true. Is this statement a biconditional? Absolutely. Both the conditional statement and the converse are true. So this makes this a biconditional. Okay. So is it biconditional? Go. Cool. Okay. So there's a lot going on here. So there's conditional statements. So that's the old. 
PQ, and then there is the converse, which is you switch the hypotenuse and the conclusion around. Then there's the inverse. And that's where you just make them both negative. And then there is the, um, I always get these back because I don't want to mess it up. Contrapositive. Contrapositive is when you switch P negative Q with negative Q. Sometimes these statements will all be true, sometimes they won't be. Okay? So on page 215, your assignment today. I want you to do 5 to 12. 